Terus kemajuan uh, proyek uh, SIF uh, yang dijalankan salah satunya di Indonesia. Kenapa ini menjadi penting uh, buat kita di Indonesia dan saya yakin buat negara lain juga di regional. Uh, saat ini Indonesia bisa dibilang kita berada di crossroad. Uh, di mana uh, diharapkan bahwa Indonesia mulai bisa membangun sebuah transisi plan yang kuat agar kedepannya uh, kita bisa menyimbangkan antara respon program penanggulangan AIDS yang selama ini berjalan secara vertikal dan penguatan-penguatan health system strengthening yang salah satunya ya, infrastrukturnya adalah uh, JKN itu bisa berjalan secara uh, sinergis Terus terang eh, program perjalanan eh, penanggulangan AIDS selama 30 tahun belakangan ini menunjukkan bahwa Indonesia sudah mencapai banyak hal meskipun harus kita catat juga bahwa ada beberapa tantangan ke depan yang masih harus kita kerjakan bersama Tantangan-tantangan ini antara lain bagaimana kemudian negara kita mampu untuk terus mendanai program-program penanggulangan AIDS dengan bersumber dari dana domestik. Dalam kesempatan ini makanya uh, kemudian uh, Indonesia Aids Coalition uh, turut berkontribusi ingin menjadi mitra dari SIF uh, program yang secara spesifik itu bertujuan uh, bagaimana kemudian meningkatkan anggaran alokasi domestik supaya kemudian kita bisa uh, mendanai program-program penanggulangan AIDS uh, di, di negara kita secara mandiri. Pada hari ini juga hadir beberapa narasumber dari Thailand, dari Malaysia, maupun dari Filipina yang akan berbagi cerita mengenai bagaimana kemudian implementasi program penanggulangan AIDS dan bagaimana kemudian Universal Health Coverage atau National Health Insurance di negara mereka itu bisa turut berkontribusi terhadap program penanggulangan AIDS di negaranya masing-masing. Jadi uh, saya sekali lagi mengucapkan selamat datang kepada Bapak Ibu sekalian dan kepada yang paling penting teman-teman uh, kita komunitas, mitra-mitra kita kerja yang ada dari Semarang, dari Bandung yang selama uh, hampir 10 bulan ini berproses bersama. Semoga uh, harapan kami uh, bahwa Regional Forum ini bisa mendatangkan manfaat Bukan hanya uh, untuk di level nasional Tapi juga membawa manfaat bagi perencanaan, penganggaran, dan implementasi program di level uh, lokal dan Semoga materi-materi uh, yang akan dibawakan oleh pemateri-pemateri uh, kita uh, hari ini akan bisa memberikan pencerahan mengenai bagaimana kemudian kita merancang program penanggulangan AIDS yang lebih baik dengan berdasarkan uh, kemandirian pada negara kita. Terima kasih atas kehadirannya dan uh, selamat mengikuti agenda hari ini. Terima kasih. Terima kasih Bapak Aditya Wardana telah memberikan ucapan selamat datang kepada kita semua di acara ini. Bapak Ibu sekalian bahwa acara ini adalah kerjasama antara AVAO dengan dengan proyeknya SIF dengan panitia lokal dari Indonesia Aid Coalition. Sebelum kita masuk ke sambutan yang kedua, kami juga ingin mengucapkan terima kasih kepada perwakilan dari NGO di empat negara. Ada Chief dari Filipina. Tepuk tangan Chief dari Filipin. Terima kasih juga kehadirannya kawan-kawan dari Malaysia Aid Council dari Kuala Lumpur. Terima kasih. Juga ada kawan-kawan dari Thailand, Tinaf Thailand. Terima kasih sudah datang. Juga hadir di sini kawan-kawan dari Apkom Bangkok. Terima kasih kawan-kawan dari Apkom. Tepuk tangan Apkom ada di sebelah sana semua. Terima kasih. Uh, Sambutan yang kedua, oh iya, Jonas, I'm so sorry. Jonas, can you can you stand up? Really, really, sometimes depressing, right, to see how international donors are moving out. But I think this is also a critical opportunity for us to look inward, to look where are the opportunities, to look at where are the potential to look at how to strengthen the health systems 
and look at how to strengthen the civil society engagement as a partner in this movement. So I just want everyone here to participate, to ask lots of questions. UHC can be very new to a lot of us here. So ask questions, participate, interact with each other, learn from each other today. And what I hope at the end of the day is really for us, you know, as a team here, to come up with some advocacy strategies on what you think will be very useful at your country and at the regional level, and also not just identifying those strategies, but how do you measure this? How do you actually measure at the end of the day that this has been done? Shift is only one more year to go, but I'm really hoping Shift Legacy, whatever we have learned from this program, is not going to end there. I hope there's a Shift 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, until we get it right. So with that, have a great day and looking forward to learning from all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesselyn. Thank you. Okay. Tapi ibu sekalian, masih di sambutan, masih ada satu sambutan. Dan nanti di terakhir sambutan sekaligus pembukaan. Tetapi sebelum itu, kami juga ingin mengucapkan terima kasih lagi kepada kawan-kawan dari UNFPA yang telah datang di sini. Dari WHO, Mitra-Mitra Kerja Indonesia Aid Coalition, kemudian dari UNDP, selamat pagi, selamat datang. Selamat datang pula dari kawan-kawan Linkage. Terima kasih kehadirannya, teman-teman Spiritia, teman-teman dari WHO, dan juga kawan-kawan dari Bank Dunia, World Bank. Terima kasih, selamat datang. Oke, okay, uh, sambutan berikutnya. Kami persilakan Ibu Tina Puntur dari UNA Indonesia Country untuk memberikan sambutan kepada kita semua. Ya, mungkin saya di sini ya, karena saya kan dari UN harus ada kayak formal. Oh, ada mic juga, sorry. Oke. Jadi selamat pagi semuanya. Mohon maaf saya akan ngomong bahasa Inggris tadi. Ya. Ya. Oke, so I've prepared like a really formal remarks after what just happened. I feel a little bit embarrassed, but I'm just gonna go with my formal remarks. So um, I'd like to thank the Indonesian AIDS Coalition and the Shift Program for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. Um, I really would like to start out. First of all, by commending all of you for all the hard work that have already been carried out today, um, we see from the report that all four countries, um, Malaysia, Indonesia, <coughs> Thailand, and, and the Philippines, have a functioning universal health care system that covers HIV treatment and, um, and care service costs. So this is actually a, a huge um, accomplishment. So while there remains limitations and challenges to achieve full coverage, we have come a long way and the progress today must be acknowledged. So a big round of applause to all of you and everyone. Throughout the day, you'll be sharing information and lessons learned on what works and what doesn't, and how to best advocate for HIV, TB, critical health programs such as hepatitis C, harm reduction, and PrEP um, to be included in the UHC. Our common goal is to ensure that no one gets left behind and that we will achieve all the sustainable development goals. We aim to attain universal health coverage by 2030 and reduce out-of-pocket and catastrophic health expenditure, especially for key population groups that can't afford it. So building on these initial successes, we, we know that there's still some ways to go. We must increase the common citizen's understanding of universal health coverage, increase access to information, awareness of the right to health as a human right, without demand from grassroots, uh, which we have not really been hearing much of, especially here in Indonesia. Without the demands um, for equal access to health services, there is unfortunately no push for urgent action. Government attention remain on infrastructure and economic development. We must remind the government that without health, there is nothing. What will all the economic development be for? Who will be there to enjoy the high GDP and higher quality of life? You will also be hearing today about Indonesia's National Health Insurance Program, the, the JKN, which is 
very impressive. In just over five years, it has managed to bring more than 70% of the population uh, under the program. But then the flip side of that, there is still almost 30% that remain uninsured, and the large proportion are the ones that are in, employed in the informal workforce. So putting that into perspective, 30% of the Indonesian population is almost 60 million people. You will also hear that there are some barriers to access, um, such as absence of ID cards, family cards, uh, family registration cards that, that then ultimately exclude key populations from the program. And lastly, you will also be discussing transition and sustainability of programs. And in Indonesia, it should be good news. As a G20 country, as an almost upper middle income country with rising economic growth, it's actually on the brink of losing its access to external funding from the Global Fund. It has already lost funding from the other donors. We don't need to name them here. Um, yeah, and or should we name them here? <laughs> but the time is really now. Um, uh, before we we totally lose um, all money in the next few years, the time is now to initiate the development of the transition preparedness assessment, collect strategic information through research, rapid assessment, and identify essential components of of a transition plan. Um, I just want to list out a few questions that need to be answered when we look to prepare um, the country for, for transitioning out of external funding. Um, does the country have a national financing system for HIV and TB that is assured, um, including for prevention and enabling environment, human rights programs, programs for community-based organizations, implemented um, and, and uh, managed by community-based organizations? Is there a national lab strategic plan that is functional and sustainable? Are costs of essential health commodities such as ARVs accessible and affordable? Is there a strong data and information system to inform policy and programs? Is the HIV TB programs fully accessible among all key populations? Is HIV and TB programs managed jointly? Is there an overall national coordinating entity such as a CCM uh, that is um, including civil society participation? And, has, and does the country have social contracting mechanism for, for NGOs and CEOs? And is the country committed to anti-discrimination actions led by government in close collaboration with civil society in order to improve the environment for key populations and encourage um, increased uh, utilization of testing services? This, this last one is actually really, really important. You could be a upper and middle income country, G20 country, but if you don't have that commitment to um, to uh, work on um, addressing stigma and discrimination, your programs will not succeed. This we, we know um, over time, and it has been proven wherever there is a successful program, they have been able to reduce stigma and address discrimination and improve, you know, um, scale up of, of programs. Um, uh, and, and civil societies are, community representatives are then accessing um, programs. Um, there is still a couple more years to go until external funding completely runs out. Until then, it is really crucial to plan ahead, prepare for alternative funding mechanisms in the event that the government will not be able to fund uh, beyond, um, beyond uh, what they are currently funding to mostly um, treatment. So, so that was my uh, bureaucratic UN speech. And um, I wish you all a, a productive, exciting meeting to learn from each other. And I hope that you will find um, concrete, uh, creative programs that will be implemented in order to, to reach our common goal. Thank you very much. Thank you for Mr. Oke, selanjutnya uh, sambutan yang terakhir sekaligus membuka acara kita pagi hari ini. Uh, tapi sebelum itu kami juga ingin menyampaikan bahwa kegiatan ini dihadiri oleh perwakilan empat CCM dari empat negara. Terima kasih perwakilan CCM dari empat negara telah hadir di meeting ini. Uh, terakhir, saya persilahkan Bapak Dr. Donald Pardede, MPMM, spesialis staff to the Minister of Health, 
for development and health financing. Kami persilakan Bapak untuk memberikan sambutan sekaligus membuka acara pada pagi ini. Allow me to use this podium as well, <laughs> but this is not about the bureaucratic style. This is uh, just to help me putting my uh, notes. Yang saya hormati Pak Edo, Director Executive PIC, Mr. Head from AFAU, Ms. Jocelyn Pan, Ms. Tina Bindu from UNAIDS, colleagues and participants from Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, and also Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, Bapak Ibu yang saya hormati, selamat pagi, good morning. First of all, I would like to welcome you all to Jakarta, especially for uh, to our overseas colleagues who attend this meeting. It is my privilege to say a few words in this major forum on USC in six countries program. I have been asked to speak on the topic of universal health coverage as the future of future for achieving uh, sustainability of HIV AIDS elimination program. As I understand, this meeting will cover some important issues, including USC itself and financial sustainability of the HIV AIDS program. Let me first start with introduce you our USC program. As you all might know, Indonesia started the USC program, and as uh, Tina mentioned earlier, we call it JKN, Jaminan Kesehatan Nasional. Since 2014, with an ambitious goal to achieve universal health coverage in 2019, so next year. <coughs> the scheme was born to, due to several reasons. First is to correct fragmentation, because <coughs> prior to 2014, social health insurance in Indonesia was fragmented, and hence low of the last number cannot be optimized, and the benefit basket was unstandardized, so efficiency due to economic of scales cannot be optimized. Second, to correct exclusive target of the insured and hence to gain USC. Initially, the scheme is limited to certain group, for example, civil servant, private, military, while the rest of population, the informal sector, the poor, are not so, are not, so no way to reach the universal coverage group. Third, to correct the social health insurance implementation. Anomaly was exist in Indonesia previous scheme. Social health insurance scheme was managed by profit state-owned companies. And we know this is a, a, to maximizing profit yeah, as a company, as such against the social health insurance philosophy. Today, our program, the JKN program, has reached more than 193 million people, almost 76% uh, of the population. The scheme then becomes one of the largest single payer system in the world, which is also raises public expectation. From all the perspective, a commitment to universal health coverage means meeting this. There is no universal formula for reaching universal coverage. Indonesia, like many countries, must have its own way forward. If we refer to recent definition, USC means ensuring that all people can use the promotive, preventive, curative, rehabilitative, and palliative health services they need of sufficient quality to be effective, while also ensuring that the use of these services does not expose the user to financial hardship. Therefore, to achieve universal health coverage, we must ensure not only availability, but more importantly, ensure that intended users have the ability to access and utilize 
the health services. In case of Indonesia, the focus will have to be increasing accessibility by increasing ability of the intended user to surround any barriers. In light of the overarching umbrella of the Sustainable Development Goals or Agenda 2030, Indonesia remains strongly committed to implement the SDGs at national level and thus achieving the targets, especially those that fall under the SDGs health goal. As we move now towards the three zeros by 2030, we must remain vigilant of the threat while at the same time continue to develop creative and implementable actions to achieve zero new infections, zero AIDS related death, and zero stigma and discrimination. And that is just what we have, what we Indonesia have been planning in anticipating the global fund transition. Sustainability of HIV AIDS financing as well as the Transition are important topics that will be discussed in this meeting. This is need to be linked and integrated to countries' USC programs. Sustainability is the ability of a health program or country to both maintain and scale up service coverage to a level in line with the epidemiological context that will provide for continuing, continuing control of a public health problem and support efforts for elimination of the three diseases, even after the removal of external funding by the Global Fund and other major external donors. Transition is the mechanism by which a country or a country component moves towards fully funding and implementing its health programs independent of Global Fund support while continuing to sustain the gains and scaling up as appropriate. Components that are currently transitioning are those that have been determined to be newly ineligible as per the Global Fund's eligibility policy. According to that, once a country reaches upper middle income status, its DCS components are no longer eligible for funding if they have less than a high disease burden. The eligibility policy allows for up to one allocation of transition funding following a change in eligibility. Transition funding should be used solely to fund activities including the components transition work plan. Since July 2016, the CCM Indonesia and the Global Fund Secretariat has discussed with World Bank Indonesia Office of using their multi trust fund facilities to conduct reviews, studies, and research on policies in Indonesia relevant to the USC and, specific, and specifically on accessibility of services for HIV AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. Within this area of focus, we further concentrate on policies regarding financing of non-governmental and or civil society by the government. Our objective was fill the gaps where the needs where we need to develop the policy which will allow and facilitate channeling government funds to civil society groups involved in ATM programs. In this way we will be able to mitigate the problems which may arise when the global fund grants stop. Since up to 42% of the grants are supporting activities done by civil society. Preliminary results of this MDPF studies show that Global Fund grant, which goes through government channels, are basically safe, meaning they can easily be replaced by government funding when Global Fund leaves. However, the same cannot be said for Global Fund grant, which goes through non-government channels. Much of them cannot be funded by government, although funds are available. How can this be so simple? In one side, government employs very stringent financial rules and 
regulation. On the other side, civil society organization, are not yet equipped or even has any capacity at all to handle financial regulatory needs demanded by public officials. The next question is how to integrate HIV AIDS that previously funded by Global Fund into countries USC program. It must be admitted that this is not an easy thing. In the case of Indonesia, some HIV AIDS programs have become a benefit of USC program. However, surely not all of the needs of the HIV AIDS services can immediately be incorporated into the USC program. It must be sorted out, which is a new benefit of the USC program and which should be financed by other funding mechanism because each country defines benefit differently from one to others. This will include what is the core or standard of the HIV program, what is determined to be medically necessary, what are the criteria to be applied for deciding upon the actual covered benefit, what is need to be considered such as the culture and value, how to balance between acute needs and prevention and improvement of quality of life, <coughs> the dilemma of the dilemma of a little for many against a lot of a lot for a few. Finally, I have two concluding notes. First is about sustainability. HIV AIDS programs must continue in a country even if the country is no longer eligible to receive grants from the Global Fund. The sustainability issue should be the concern of all stakeholders. Second, a country's financing system with USC programs is an opportunity for sustainability of HIV AIDS program. Although it is necessary to sort out and agree on what services can be part of the U.S.'s benefit package. I will leave the conclusion and look forward to hearing the results from the discussion. I wish you a great success meeting and with that, I invite you all to open this meeting. Thank you. sekalian uh, kita lanjutkan acara kita kita akan mulai di sesi pertama pada sesi